watching The Pulse, your weekly guide to global health on Al Jazeera. I'm Shireen El Feki. Now, some diseases are just bullies. They prey on the weak and vulnerable. Pneumonia is one of the worst. It kills more than two million kids a year. It's difficult to deal with in poor countries where it hits hardest. Fortunately, there is new hope in the form of vaccines against one of the leading causes of the disease. Here's our report on the latest weapon against this childhood killer. The Kenyan Health Service, like many in the developing world, is getting better at supplying medicines and vaccines to its youngest citizens. Children can now be vaccinated against tetanus, hepatitis, polio, and other diseases. But some organisms still fall through the net. One of the deadliest is a bacteria carried by up to 80% of the population. Even in healthy individuals, it lurks undetected at the back of the throat. It's called Streptococcus pneumoniae, otherwise known as pneumococcus. If pneumococcus spreads to the rest of the body, then there's trouble, because this bacteria can cause deadly pneumonia. After malaria, pneumonia is the second most common diagnosis made in children aged less than two years here at Kilipi District Hospital. At Kawifi District Hospital, Dr. Anne Wariri and her colleagues on the pediatric ward deal with the consequences of pneumococcal infection every day. This child has severe pneumonia. It is very likely that the pneumonia this child has has been caused by the pneumococcus. This child is receiving intravenous antibiotics and uh, also requires um, some oxygen. Antibiotics are the standard treatment for pneumococcus, but bacterial resistance means these drugs are losing their power. And by the time patients get them, it's often too late to help. New tools are desperately needed in the fight against pneumococcus. One of the most promising is making a difference here, in South Africa. Professor Keith Klugman works at South Africa's National Health Laboratory Service. For years, he's been at the forefront of the fight against pneumococcus. I think living in South Africa and practicing medicine in South Africa, one is acutely aware of the major infectious disease problems um, in developing countries. Pneumonia is a huge cause of death and yet there are very few people working on pneumonia. Dr. Klugman is part of an international effort to develop a vaccine against pneumococcus. Dr. Oren Levine, with Johns Hopkins University, is head of the initiative. Effective vaccinations are essential. The old adage that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure is particularly true with pneumococcal disease. So antibiotics are important, but they're not going to take care of the pneumococcal disease problem. The search for an effective infant pneumococcal vaccine has been long and difficult. But in 2000, there was a breakthrough. The Prevnar vaccine. Developed for the US market, scientists use biotechnology to create a vaccine against seven of the most infective strains of pneumococcus. When Prevnar, the first seven-valent pneumococcal conjugate vaccine, was tested and the results presented, the community was ecstatic. While this vaccine works in the developed world, it's not designed for poorer countries. What we need for developing countries is a vaccine that also includes some of the important strains that are not found in the developed world. Dr. Klugman led South African tests of a new pneumococcal vaccine with an extra two strains, better suited to the disease burden in Africa. The trials took place at the Baragwanath Hospital in Soweto. It's the largest hospital in the Southern Hemisphere. Drug manufacturers provided the team with a nine-strain vaccine, two more than the standard seven. If this vaccine works, we'll have for the first time a vaccine tailored for developing countries which could prevent pneumonia in millions of children. For over four years, Professor Klugman and the team carried out their trial with the help of more than 40,000 infants. At 
stake was the health of millions of children who could benefit if the new vaccine proved its worth. The results were good news. The vaccine helped protect children against pneumococcal disease. I'd be very glad if we did have a vaccine against pneumococcal disease because we'd be able to reduce the incidence of this common disease. Less children would suffer. My hope is that if we're successful, we can accelerate the use of this vaccine in the world's poorest countries by as much as 10 years over what's historically been seen. And we might start saving lives as early as 2008. We just saw Oren Levine, who heads the International Initiative on Pneumococcal Vaccines, in the film. And he joins me now in the studio. Oren, there's now plenty of scientific evidence to show that these vaccines are effective in rich and poor countries. What's the next step in uh, getting them to children at risk? Well, this is an exciting time for us because we're on the verge of accelerating use in the poorest countries of the world by more than 10 years. Beginning next year in the countries that are eligible for funding through the Gavi Alliance, we'll begin using the pneumococcal vaccine in somewhere between two and 10 of those countries. So we expect to, to begin using the vaccine and saving lives in 2008. Can you tell us a little bit more about the Gavi Alliance? Sure. The Gavi Alliance was created in the year 2000 to help speed uh, new vaccines to developing countries and to expand their use. And what sort of vaccines are they working with? They work to support the systems to deliver all vaccines and to help overcome financing obstacles for new vaccines like Hib, uh, pneumococcal vaccine, and rotavirus vaccines. Now, on the financing side, we've seen that there's a lot of innovation in the lab and in the clinic, but there's actually been quite a lot of creative thinking in finding the money to fund vaccines. How has the pneumococcal vaccine program benefited from this? Well, tremendously. I think the financing obstacle was one of the biggest historically to getting new vaccines into the poorest countries. And recently with the um, announcement of one and a half billion dollars for an advanced market commitment, um, pledges from uh, five countries, Italy, the UK, Canada, Norway, and Russia, plus the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, we're on the verge of uh, really changing the entire environment for pneumococcal vaccines. What exactly is an advanced market commitment? Yeah, an advanced market commitment is kind of a bridge it's a bridge between developing countries who need predictable long-term financing for the vaccine and assurance of low prices, and industry who needs assurance that if they develop a vaccine, there'll be a market for it uh, that helps them to recoup their investments. So how does it work in practice? So it works in practice by taking the pledges from the countries, the donor countries, wrapping them together into a binding agreement whereby if uh, manufacturers make a vaccine that fits the characteristics that we want for poor countries and the poor countries choose their vaccine, they get reimbursed at a price that helps them to uh, recoup their investment. The companies in turn pledge to provide that vaccine after the advanced market commitment at a lower, more predictable price. Now, I can understand that that makes sense for vaccines that are still in the early stages of research and development, but the pneumo vaccines were already out there. By having an advanced market commitment, isn't that just putting money in the pockets of pharma companies that had already made the vaccines? Actually, um, it would seem like this would be better for those early stage vaccines, but in fact, there's quite a lot of work that needs to be done on the pneumococcal vaccines. We need additional capacity to supply the vaccines. We need other serotypes in the vaccines that are important for developing countries. And oftentimes we need them to test the vaccines or change the packaging of the vaccines in order to make them fit developing country programs in ways that are not required for their commercial markets. So the advanced market commitment is gonna do a couple of important things. It's going to get us the supply that we need. It's going to generate investments in capacity. It's going to get manufacturers to change the formulations and the presentations so that these vaccines fit better with developing country programs. Well, it's great news that we have these new vaccines, but even with a vaccine, it's only going to deal with about a third of pneumonia cases in the developing world. We still have a need for for testing and for better treatment, and it, just generally better healthcare systems. How are you trying to link this innovation in vaccines with general healthcare reform in the countries where the vaccines are going? That's a great question, because um, pneumonia is a huge global health problem that needs uh, many 
complementary interventions to overcome it. Pneumococcal vaccines are just one. In addition to the vaccine, there needs to be strengthening of health systems, continued research, and surveillance to monitor the impact and make sure that we get all of these interventions to the children who need them the most. So that sort of joined up thinking is already part of the plan to get the vaccine out there? Absolutely. The Gavi Alliance not only supports immunization procurement or the financing to buy the vaccine, they're putting half a billion dollars into strengthening health systems. They support um, the strengthening of immuniza immunization systems more generally and overall try to help uh, systems in countries reach all children with all uh, life-saving interventions. Well, best of luck with the initiative. Thank Thanks, Oren. Thank you. Coming up after the break, we look at Afghanistan's other war, saving its mothers.